Jimmy. Indeed, no time no see. No time no see. Oh. It's straight to zoom in. There you go. Ah, welcome, you guys. I hope you see everything all right. Uh, so if you follow my videos lately, I said I was experimenting with uh, stop motion and trying to build a puppet for stop motion. So that's basically what I'm doing right now. Um, and uh, as you can see, I've started with a base because uh, I've tried several things. Uh, I actually want to do a, a, an animated uh, character, a character you can move uh, for stop motion. So I want something more or less a little complex, something that could, you know, I could really use for a long time that won't break. And I tried uh, several times. Uh, I made two attempts before that. First uh, prototype is this one. Uh, I used uh, I used epoxy, as you can see, for the hard parts, and I used uh, some um, some wire or some what do you call this uh, iron wire. But I put a little too much of them, and the wire tend to break, as you can see. Gonna put a bit more lights. There you go. So the wire tend to break. Uh, and I wanted to do some removable hands, so I put some wire there, some aluminum wire to stick hands and be able to remove them if I wanted. So this was the first prototype, it was all right, but I figured that the, the wires were way too fragile. So I tried with another type of wire that was larger uh, and it seemed all right. So I've started uh, to put the um, a kind of uh, wrapping around it because I'm gonna use latex uh, above it, you know, uh, air drying latex afterwards. But uh, unfortunately, I was almost done uh, when the one of the arm broke, the other one, and this one broke uh, as you can see. So I figured that um, uh, even if I chose a good wire, it would end up uh, breaking. So I was looking for something uh, that would last and that wouldn't break after hours uh, of, uh, of doing it. Search online and there are some great um, uh, articulated uh, bots, articulated uh, figures, uh, but they tend to be very expensive. So what I found, uh, actually I didn't find this one, actually my girlfriend did. Uh, she found this uh, Modi bot, so if you're interested, they're not really expensive, they, like, they're like 10 euros I think. Uh, they are meant for stop motion, and uh, you can even download uh, some free. Uh, if you've got access to a 3D printer, you can download some free uh, free samples. So this is another one, but he's a little too small. I'm afraid uh, he's going to be too fragile for stop motion because I wanted something even more, uh, uh, let's say, uh, human-like, human proportion, like realistic than this one, because. Uh, the, the shoulders uh, were a bit large for what I want to do. I want to do a, a, a kid, a child. So this was a bit large. But this is good, but probably the, the models, uh, the different pieces, they should be uh, a, a bit... Uh, I should print them uh, a bit uh, bigger because the, the joints are pretty fragile, see? And it doesn't hold very well. So I, I might try to do something with it, maybe another character. That won't be used as much, but I'm gonna use this for a starter. And as you can see, I've uh, put on some foam on the parts that are to be a bit a uh, bit larger, because because um, actually the the pieces are flat on one side, and I'm gonna wrap this up uh, with um, 
with this so, sort of cloth that I got from um, ordering a, um, what do you call that, a sofa, you know, for the house. So there was a lot of this cloth all around it and it looks really good because it's a bit, uh, you know, flexible. But also it's it's going to be great to hold uh, to hold the character and give a bit more uh, uh, thickness. So there you go. I've added some foam that I've there you go. I've added some foam that I've uh, you know filed uh, just to get the the right um, the right shape for the muscles. As you can see, the the plastic part was really flat and that wasn't really realistic. But if I wanted to have this articulation going the the right way, I had to put the flat uh, side in front. So I did that also on the feet and mainly on the bust, a little bit on the the arm. And then I've um, I've got um, the front of uh, I've got the front of the the arm because it was way too too thick for me way too thick for uh, uh, well for the the wrist of the character so I'm gonna do the same technique I did before uh, in my prototype I'm gonna do removable hands I think it'll be a, a lot better and uh, and there you go oh yeah I've also added some uh, magnets. Uh, under just to be able to to have a character I'm gonna use a sheet of metal when I gonna animate uh, them and this is gonna allow my character to be able to uh, you know to stand um, even if uh, even if I do a pretty weird stances <laughs> of course hopefully it will hold a lot better but it's gonna be able to to hold um, to get nice uh, nice stands um, Hey, uh, plug sword. Where are those ball joints? My loose in contact with you. Um, where are those ball joints? I'm not sure they're gonna lose on contact because it's actually um, it isn't too. See, it's pretty hard. You can move it, but it's pretty it's pretty strong, you know. So and there's gonna be cloth all around it. So I'm not sure it's gonna it's gonna loosen. Uh, besides, if you wear it off, if I wear the balls, I'm afraid it's going to be worse. I mean, it's going to be all, you know, flimsy. So I want something a bit, you know, something that's going to be able to stand in place, uh, just to be to be able to decompose the movement this way. And it should be all right. In any case, you know, I'm experimenting. This is a prototype number three in any case. So let's see about that. I'm not even sure the magnets are the best. Uh, the best uh, idea. Um, I think they are, but I'm, you know, I'm experimenting. Uh, what I wanted to do first was this, you know, with magnets in front, uh, so that I could actually, you know, get the foot to um, to bend. Uh, and I even did it better here. Normally, I was able to bend here. See, but um, I'm not gonna be able to do that with this. He's not really gonna be able to bend his feet. That is kind of a bummer, but I'll do without it. It's all right. So there you go. I've just take this. Uh, I guess to have a better holding, I should put some epoxy or maybe just some, um, maybe I'm going to put some Mod Podge here. And then I'm going to wrap everything up just like this one to have sort of a mummy. Because uh, the idea by the end is to use some latex, uh, some air drying latex that I'm going to put on the character. Uh, to simulate uh, skin. Of course, I'm not going to do that today. I think today I'm going to mainly focus on the wrapping. And of course, there's going to be a head. So this is a prototype. It's not finished. Uh, not nearly as finished. The head is way too big. But I'm gonna. Um, it's going to be my pro. It's my prototype. So I'm going to sculpt it pretty well to get something cool. And then I'm going to use it uh, to to cast some molds because uh, I want to do one head that is going to be basically half of the head is going to stay on the um, on the puppet uh, but the other half is going to be you know cut flat with a um, magnet inside too there's going to be hairs uh, that are going to be staying there uh, but I'm going to be able to remove the head to change the expressions the eyebrows are going to be movable the eyes too uh, however, they're so they're going to be set inside. However, the the face uh, with uh, hollowed uh, eyes will be uh, there will be many faces that are going to be uh, adjustable that are going to be uh, you know that we're going to be able to set 
on it just to, when we want a different expression for the math or something else. Uh, how thick is the skin? How much weight are you proposing to put on the armature? Uh, not that much. Uh, this one's heavy, uh, but first off, it's very, uh, very big. I'm basically gonna trim it a lot until I get the right shape. I mean, the the nose isn't gonna be just uh, that big, so it's probably gonna be a lot smaller. And also, uh, by the end, I think the the faces are gonna be made in uh, another kind of. Um, this is basically FIMO paste. And I'm probably going to use another kind of FIMO paste that is lighter. So I'm not sure there's going to be a lot of weight on top of this. But, you know, it can, it can stand uh, quite a decent amount of weight, you know. It's pretty... yeah, of course, if I do it too much. It's got a pretty... it's pretty... Uh, how do you say? It's pretty tough. The armature is pretty tough. Doesn't move too much. It's pretty tough. So I, I haven't weighted in any in any uh, way, uh, the weight that is going to be on top and I haven't finished the head and I haven't decided in which material I cast it well I know I want to do it in final paste but I don't know which one this is the normal final paste so it's kind of heavy but the, you've got the light uh, weight version, I've got some too so I'm gonna see, depends, but I'm not sure uh, I don't think there's gonna be any issue with the weight original parts to to cast make no difference on weight, 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 weight. Well, there's going to be most of the, the thickness is going to be uh, made with this uh, wrapping all around, and there's go just going to be a very thin layer of latex. Um, the head won't have any latex uh, this, since it's only going to be a FIMO paste, a FIMO paste that's going to be very. I want something very flat. It's going to be a kid, so I want him to have a very flat. Um, very smooth skin and most of the time is going to wear uh, clothes uh, hiding mostly everything uh, except the hands and maybe the, the forearms so I'm gonna I'm still still I'm gonna use latex on uh, on most of the body uh, by the end because even if he's, if he's gonna have some some clothes I want to be able to, uh, to 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 make some shots where he's not like completely uh, closed on or something like that if you, I want the character to be able to swim or something like I don't know uh, I try to be able to to see at least uh, the top of his body and the arms and the shoulders so I'm gonna put some latex on definitely on the feet maybe also if I if I get to do something that's looking like feet and that's not sure. Um, but yeah, there's going to be very little latex. Um, so yeah. So I just put a little more uh, thickness there for the thighs, the, um, a little bit the butts, the back. I just did a very quick, uh, you know, just to give a little more thickness. And I've cut up strips. Uh, of this uh, sort of um, fabric in which my sofa came so I've got a shit ton of it and I'm going to be wrapping uh, the character so I'm not exactly sure how many uh, times I have to wrap it since uh, since this one is a lot thicker than the, the previous ones Maybe I'm gonna try to do some thinner uh, straps, I think. I'm gonna try to do this. Uh, where's this? Looking for the scissors I used. Oh, here they are. Uh, hello, Bill. Sounds ideal. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I want something very uh, uh, flexible, so I thought I might as well um, use only the fabric and then put latex on, since normally it shouldn't be visible. I'm going for something, uh, hopefully, that isn't too expensive also. I mean, I, I bought the latex, but I want something that isn't too uh, too expensive. Same thing for the, um, the skeleton. Uh, I found many... Uh, very good uh, skeletons that are made for uh, for stop motion, but of course they are a lot more expensive. You only need to build to bulk out most of the skeleton. The lightweight packing wrap looks like a good start. Yeah, especially for the 
as you can see, I haven't um, I haven't put any. Uh, I don't know if you're experienced uh, plug sword with uh, stop motion. I'm just starting it myself. So I've seen. Uh, I've obviously watched a lot of uh, of stop motion uh, movies, but uh, and seen a lot of uh, you know uh, tutorials and and uh, reportage and uh, you know. Uh, films uh, split, uh, talking about stop motion, but I'm really not experienced. But I wanted to do the straps because see here I didn't put anything on the on the belly because if I put the straps, it's gonna remain very flexible. So I'm gonna be able to to make him bend pretty well, and the latex over it's gonna bend too. There's only gonna be some uh, some fabric underneath, so that appears to be uh, the best option to have something that's to have some character that is still pretty uh, pretty flexible. So of course I'm gonna animate him, so he's got to be uh, able to do uh, you know natural movements. I want him to be able to do this, for example. So yeah, the um, fabric seems like a, a good idea, I guess. But I'm not sure, you know. I'm just experimenting, so maybe it's maybe it's a bad idea. I'll see that later. But seems alright. I mean. This first prototype I did end up breaking at the arm, but it was the wire that broke. The rest is pretty neat. I mean, I'm pretty confident if I achieve such a look on the new one, I'll be able to put some some latex on it, and it should go, should look pretty well. Oh no, I don't want to put latex under the cloth. I want to put latex on top of the cloth. That's why, you know, here I didn't put any latex. It's just cloth, you know. It's wrapped and then glued when uh, see it start to to unfold, but it's okay. This prototype is for the bin basically. So no, I just wrapped it and I'm gonna put latex on. Well, the idea is to put latex on top afterwards. So yeah, uh, the latex is really gonna be the the end uh, surface. You know, it's the idea. I'm uh, I don't know if it's gonna be. Uh, going well but I'm definitely gonna try to do this so what I'm think I'm gonna do right now is first to wrap up the legs just to see how it goes um, then I'm probably gonna put some mud budge on the arms there just to, to straighten up I've put some strong glue but just to straighten up here the 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 link the junction between the um, the aluminum uh, wire and the rest of the arm and then I'm gonna wrap the rest up, and afterwards I think I'm probably gonna trim this and try to sculpt the head to be a bit more realistic. Um, there you go. So <laughs> let's try to do this. This part should be okay. I mean, there's no reason it shouldn't work. Uh, it worked for the first one, so I guess I'm gonna try to do it just as well. The only thing I'm concerned about is that I don't seem to have any strong glue left, and even if I don't need much, uh, I'd like something that sticks pretty fast. And it looks like I'm completely out of strong glue. Just noticed that, and kind of bothers me. And I'm not even sure I've got something else, uh, some strong glue left somewhere, and that kind of pisses me off. Maybe here, but I think it's completely. Is there some left? I think it's done for. Let's see. I think it's done for. So I'll have to find something else. Okay, let's start with this one. No. Don't have anything less. Shit. What should I try? Um, well, I've got other stuff. I've got this. But it looks a little bit like an overkill to, to start gluing it. <laughs> I guess I can. Um, let's get something, some kind of surface here. There you go. Yeah, any type, but I want something that sticks fast because I want it to hold. I'm just gonna try to do this. Hope it's not gonna be melting the foam too much, though. Okay, that should be enough. I 
There you go. Okay. I'm just gonna wrap it all around. There you go. I'm making it stick a little bit and I'm gonna be trimming it afterwards. So it's all right. I'm gonna try to put uh, not too much of it because I don't want the character to be very thick. Actually, I wanted it, the character to be pretty thin. And uh, obviously he's gonna be way thicker than I wanted him to. Because I wanted him to be very slender as you can see. The problem is uh, that with these um, uh, articulations, uh, I'm not going to be able to do something as thin, but it should be all right. I'm going to try to put, do it a little thinner though. What I really like about this cloth is that you can decide uh, it's uh, it's flexible. So if I actually put more pressure, it's going to be thinner. So I'm going to be doing a very thin, uh, mo most of the time a very thin uh, layer, just to be sure I don't do something too too thick. The eternal triad, fast, cheap quality, take your pick or of two. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I want something not too expensive since I'm, you know, it's basically my new, uh, my new thing, you know, stop motion. But I can get quite passionate and if I don't be careful about the, the you know, the money investment I put in, in my new thing, I can really get um, ahead of myself. So I wanted to try something and, you know, later on, if I really enjoy stop motion and doing complex stuff, I'll probably be investing in more uh, uh, expensive uh, stuff to have, you know, uh, proper uh, exoskeletons. Uh, but for now, I'm going to stick with this uh, cheap alternative. Still, the skeleton looks, you know, better. It looks more solid. I think it will last. So it should be all right. Yeah, see, I didn't pass too much on the joints, so it still moves. See, should be all right. Tell me if you think it's too, if you think it's too, too hard. Yeah, okay. <laughs> see what I did just right there? You're right. Wait, I'm gonna go back. I want it to be super flexible. So what I'm gonna do is put very little of it on top. And I'm not gonna put it to. Uh, I'm gonna do something. I'm not gonna be. Um, yeah, I should be very gentle so it's able to move this way. It's gonna be thicker. There you go. That should be better. You're right. <laughs> Thanks for uh, for telling me that because it was uh, actually a little too tight around the. So if I really want to bend it, it, it was gonna be, you know it snapped when I, I went uh, too far. It snapped out of the socket of the. So I could have been able to put it back in. I'm sure, but it, it's actually better if I don't um, put too much pressure on it. So I think that's going to be it for the leg, you know. Very, very simple, uh, very thin uh, cover of, uh, of cloth. It's pretty fast. Huh? So there you go. Should do it. Of course, it doesn't look like anything with a little latex. But the character is going to have clothes, you know, most of the time. Maybe I'm doing, you know, too much work for nothing because he's probably going to keep his clothes all the time. But it's all right, you know, the wrappings will give, uh, you know, it will strengthen strengthen uh, all the foam bits that have been had added. Because I didn't really add them, you know, very well. I just put some glue and I figured that the, um, the wrapping would hold it in place. Okay, so now I've got to be super careful because... Wait, let me think. Let me think. Single wrap on joint. Yeah, that's what I ended up uh, doing. No, I think I, I did 
two wraps but really thin see and it should be all right as you can see it's good it works uh you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna do this there you go Uh, wait, should maybe tighten it a little more. Maybe not though. Yeah, this way. Is this gonna be, is this gonna work? Should, should. I think it will, but not sure though. Uh, spray some of the into another container and use. Oh yeah, mates, that's a great idea. So I'm gonna be able to put some of it. Uh... There you go. Ah, good ideas, mate. That's pretty, pretty smart. Uh, where are my toothpicks? Shit. It was a mess, so I cleaned it up, and now I can't find anything. I'm sure you know the, the issue. Yeah. Anyway, I'll probably put more uh, at the end on top of it. There you go. There's gonna be latex on top, so it's alright if it doesn't if it isn't glued all along. It should be fine. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm gonna have enough length. Eh. Sure I will. Okay. So, there you go. Oops, passing only two times and pretty wide. Yeah, I don't have enough. Uh, it's all right. I'll just be, you know, I'm gonna use another one or another wrap that's all right only experience with stop motion i have is minimal failures cheap materials and lack of patience no camera at the first time i finished my plans no camera at the time finished my plans oh yeah uh well i did some multiple failings i mean i'm experimenting but um okay problem with this glue is that it dries pretty fast, so. But I have other glue, so it's all right. Uh, you know, maybe it's gonna be a failing too, but I don't think so. We'll see. I mean, the previous two I did were failings. Uh, you know what? No, uh, yeah, looks all right to me. And good thing is the armature and the, you know the um, uh, the joints. They're still gonna be able to turn underneath, under the latex and under the the cloth, because uh, it's supposed to be a little uh, flexible, though. You know, so so it should be all right. So, um, it's not as thin as the other one, as I wanted to, but hey, it's the best I can do with uh, such a thick armature. So, I see, it's going to be... I uh, prefer the other one, but the other one was going to break eventually. I mean, the arms did break by the end of the, the wrapping, so, you know, only a matter of time until the legs broke too. And that really pisses me off, because it was looking good. And the legs were good. I wanted, some, I wanted a character that was going to be super uh, super thin. 
you know, a bit cartoony. Um, and now he's never going to be thin enough. Enough. Well, as thin as I want to, but should be all right. Uh, hi, Amira. No, I'm fine. And I'm from France. Uh, welcome on the live stream. Uh, currently trying to do uh, stop motion puppets with cheap materials, most of it. Even the armature isn't that uh, expensive. Uh, you can find it online. It's called a Modibot. It's meant for stop motion. And I'm just gonna try to use it as a skeleton for my character. And I'm gonna try to build on top and to get a pretty decent realistic uh, character. That's gonna look hopefully pretty cool by the end. Of course, I'm not gonna finish it now. Um, I'm not exactly a student. Uh, I'm actually a teacher, but I'm not a, a stop motion teacher. I just like to uh, to experiment stuff on my free time. Uh, I'm an art teacher, uh, but not a stop motion uh, animation teacher. I just like animation, so I'm experimenting basically. Um, I'm not a hundred percent satisfied with the wrapping here. Maybe I should have taken another wrapping just for the the other leg, but it's all right. There you go. So I'm gonna do take just a small wrapping for the rest of the leg and the foot may, mainly, because it lacks a little bit. He's gonna have some shoes. I'm not even sure I'm gonna put some you know proper legs uh, from latex underneath. I'm probably gonna put some latex, but they're probably not gonna be seen on um, on camera. Well, I'll do the the shootings, um, you know, because I really don't really like the legs. They're okay. They're not. They're not great. But they're all right. Let's do the the rest of the the foot. Uh, it's one of my hobbies. Uh, if you've seen on my channel, wait a second. If you've seen on my channel, uh, my main hobby is to do some uh, some uh, some pieces for tabletop uh, RPG. But I do like animation, so, so I'm definitely trying it out. See, uh, maybe putting too much of it. Huh. I'm gonna put some latex over it. Thanks. I'll try to do some cool things. Let it appreciate it. Um. <laughs> yeah, I'm so um, I'm not a very tidy person, you know. I I I I try to to plan things ahead, but. Usually I plan ahead and then it goes, you know, it goes apeshit. And now I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm trying to do some, some decent wrapping around the foot and <laughs> it's kind of, <clears throat> let's say it's pretty uneven. But I, I need to wrap the foot because there's actually a... There's the the magnet underneath, and I want it to be uh, fastened pretty pretty well. Okay, so mostly the the foot is done. You know? the legs are mostly done. I'm gonna be able to start the tour, so he's gonna have uh, some some shoes in any case. You know, I think. Because you can still kind of see the ankle there, but it's all right. Should be fine. He's gonna have some Viking shoes. 
Um, yeah, he doesn't really need a, a wrap. Uh, I'm doing it because I'm still not sure. I wasn't sure if I, he was going to wear shoes all the time. I wanted to be able to take off his shoes, but <laughs> obviously he's going to keep his shoes on. It's all right. So if you want to see the design of the character I'm doing, in case you want to see the, the clothes, I can show you from uh, from drawings I did. Uh, he's basically uh, going to be looking a little bit like this. Uh, so a uh, little Viking uh, character. I'm going to do two of them, hopefully. So I'm starting by this one, because, you know, why not? Um, so it's going to be like uh, this kind of hunter uh, with a very cool looking uh, belt and you know, some tr trinkets everywhere and, uh, you know, some very uh, ample, uh, large uh, clothes. I'm going to use probably an armature in these clothes. The clothes are probably going to be made, uh, sewn and made by uh, my, my girlfriend because she likes to do miniature things as well and she's way uh, better at doing clothes. But yeah, that's what I plan to do. Uh, and that's the other character I want to do. So these were early designs I did about... Uh, four years uh, ago but uh, yeah you got uh, you got some designs here I've already shown them in another live I think but uh, here you can see uh, some some drawings I did uh, it's uh, I'm probably gonna do a little small very small animation but you know if I want to experiment I've got a whole story that is gonna be uh, usable with these characters uh they're basically going to be uh, you know uh, viking scandinavian kids adventuring and uh there's much we can do with them you know nice adventures so there you go well you've got a lot of uh, drawings uh, there i'm not going to show all of them obviously but uh yeah this is going to be uh the character i'm going to do the first one i'm going to do is going to be this one um yeah yeah i'm definitely gonna focus on uh on the on the skin but you see he was supposed to have a very uh very large uh close uh showing a lot of exposed flesh mainly here and also he's got uh the um, the arms that are going to be pretty exposed the rest is supposed to be covered so yeah it should be fine for the legs uh, same for the other kid. The other kid has mainly, you know, the uh, yeah, the forearms and the head. He's even less exposed. So it should be cool, you know, uh, to do these characters. Hopefully, if it works, and uh, uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Going back. I've got a call. Bon, elle est peut-être allée se promener. Je pense suis d'appel. Ah, bah, elle est peut-être allée faire deux, trois courses, mais elle n'est pas rentrée à la maison, en tout cas. Là, ça fait combien de temps que tu l'as lâché à la lampe Ici Ça fait combien de temps que vous êtes séparés devant chez nous Ah, je peux... bah, ça coûte. Bah, j'imagine qu'elle se balade. Elle est peut-être allée faire deux, trois courses en passant. Bah. Bon, je pense qu'elle ne devrait pas y avoir de soucis. Elle doit faire des courses. Je peux l'appeler. Après, si elle est au front prix, elle capte peut-être pas. Hein, parce que je crois que dans le front prix, ça ne capte pas. Voilà. Yeah, back. Yeah, I've got a uh, story made, so it's gonna be uh, usable. Uh, what do I have? Let's see. Uh, I got some pretty cool. Yeah, I can show you the one of the one of the types of the bad guys you're gonna have in the 
in this story. <laughs> of course, if I'm gonna do puppets for this, it's gonna take a, whole <laughs> a big time, you know. So it's not the, it's really not the issue. Uh, it's really not the um, the goal right now. But yeah, these are basically the, the the bad guys of the main issue, the the first issue, and they're looking pretty cool. Um, yeah, so let's see. Yeah, this was supposed to be because it was supposed to be a comics at first. And this was supposed to be the the cover of the comics. Uh, so there you go, two uh, the two characters, Bjorn and Einar. Yeah, you've got the the more like uh, the hunter kid, you know, not very rich and used to you know work in nature and live in nature, uh, very shamanic, very tribe uh, kid. And then you've got Einar. The kid, uh, the show Viking, you know, coming from a, a family of uh, explorers and, you know, and, um, and pirates and, you know, a lot richer, hmm? with uh, richer clothes and an actual small sword and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, it was supposed to be, to be a comics at first. I'm going to see if I'm not going to be able to do uh, some more animations. We'll see. Uh, how familiar am I with mold making? I've made some molds, but I'm far from familiar. Uh, however, my girlfriend's gone, has done has done way more uh, molds than I have. Uh, so, uh, so I'm gonna rely also um, on her experience. But I'm gonna do very uh, easy molds, you know, using um, she's got uh, silicone for uh, for molds that are meant for for doing s some precise molds. So I think I'm gonna use this silicone. We've got some left. And it's basically going to be a very small mold, uh, just for the faces. Uh, the rest I'm going to build it up. I know it's faster with uh, doing molds. Uh, I've seen many tutorials. So I guess if I want to do many characters uh, fast, uh, many puppets, I'll probably end up doing some molds to you know, use latex. But it's also going to be a lot more expensive, so I'll see later. I'm just going to start with a few, uh, few characters and then you know, I'll see. One thing at a time. At a time. Oh, I'm not that experienced with molds, um, but I guess I'll get the experience when I'll, you know, when I experiment. So, as you can see, as you can see, I've used some of the foam to make sort of a butt right there. So. Is actually going to be able to have some sort of butt. It's going to be a bit more realistic, I guess. There you go. Something like that, I guess. Uh, not too much, not too much. I don't want to put too much of it. And then I'm going to go around. Should put maybe a little more foam under there, but okay, let's go. Let's go all around. I mean, I can always go back if I see that I've put too much fabric. Use the nightmare before Christmas as an example of what I mean. Uh, Name it before Christmas. It's uh yeah the uh Tim Burton film right? That's what you're talking about I think, because I'm French. Uh, it's uh, Les Noël de Monsieur Jack. I think it's the movie you're talking about right? Because yeah, it's made of uh, it was made of uh, in stop motion. Um, I've um I've looked at uh at many uh you know to do the expressions because I've tested animation before. So I have a panel of expressions and, you know, open math, but I'll definitely check uh, if there is a, a, a sort of a example, a sort of template of Nightmare Before Christmas uh, for the faces and the expressions. I'll definitely check it out. Thanks. And uh, yeah, there are many, um, many movies, many uh, stop motion movies that relied on this technique. I mean, it's not the fastest way to go. Uh, it's not the easiest way to go, but it's definitely, wait, I'm, I'm just making sure I'm not doing any crap right now. 
it's not the fastest way to go or the easiest way to go, but it's definitely one of the best uh, way to go if you want a very uh, smooth face. Because uh, latex, uh, unless uh, um, I mean, uh, unless uh, you use, uh, you really cast it. Uh, if you put on some latex on a surface, it's never gonna be completely flat. There's gonna be some minor uh, differences, and uh, of course it's gonna age also. Latex is going to age, so for a very young face, uh, it's gonna be an issue uh, if I use latex. So that's why I want uh, to go with uh, with Fimo paste because when it's trimmed, it's actually very smooth. Um, so I think I'm gonna go with that, and you can paint it pretty well also. Latex, you have to mix in uh, the paint with the latex before applying it, it's not that great. And uh, I'm just gonna use latex on top of everything else, and then uh, latex on top of the hands. But then again, the hands are gonna be changeable. Because for the hands, uh, I'm gonna be m more or less obliged to use uh, some um, some uh, some wires. So these are the hands uh, I did. Uh, these are the hands I did. But they're of of course they're probably gonna break at one stage. I'll, I'll probably do other ones. They're gonna be changeable, you know. Uh, just offering suggestions. I want to see you succeed as soon as possible. Yeah, well, I'm definitely going to check out uh, the, the, the template uh, you said about Nightmare Before Christmas. Because uh, what I mainly need is to know each time um, how much faces I need to get to one expression. I mean, I know which expressions to use, you know, uh, the smile expression, the different uh, faces and, um, you know... Um, the different uh, form can, the mouth can take uh, when you you know you speak different uh, sentences uh, different uh, letters different sounds I know that but I don't really know how much uh, faces I might just do to get to one face you know to have a fluid animation so I'll definitely check out what you uh, what you offered what you you showed me so is it going to be able to yeah. Looks good, good enough. Yeah. The only thing that's bad with this model is that the the neck doesn't move. There's no actually no neck. There's just a head and this. There's no movable neck. So I'm probably gonna use something like this as a neck. And uh, and put a head on top. Because since I have broken up the first half of the the arms, the forearms, I'm going to be able to reuse these uh, sockets, these um, these uh, joints for something else. I think I'm going to use them for a neck to have a, a head that is going to be able to really move correctly. Yeah, Armand was using plastilina uh, and they were able, you know, to change, for example, for um, uh, how is it called? Chicken Run. They were able to change the mouth. Um, that works when you get a character like, you know, the characters in Chicken Run or, uh, I don't know, you could do it very pretty easily, I think, with a character like Homer Simpson, you know, with a very defined um, outer mouth. But if you want a character that's going to be very smooth, like uh, like Jack uh, from the Nightmare uh, Before Christmas, or like, uh, I don't know if you saw the movie Kubo with this kid, uh, it's... Just it came out like one or two years ago, I think, maybe last year. Or that you want to go, if you want to go with something very smooth, uh, plasticine isn't uh, well, you can change heads, but you can't change just the mouth because there's going to be this weird line around the, the face. So, unless you're doing something, you know, an impeccable job, just like the Arman Studios did, with mostly also uh, post production on top to erase the lines. It's not gonna work. I mean, I'm never gonna be able to do uh, such a job. They are, you know, they're professionals and they they are way more, way more neat than I am. I thought about the the mask that you could, uh, you know, take away and change because it looked way easier than doing so much faces at first. You know, doing just mouths. Um, but I ended up thinking that it would be too much uh, visible on screen since this character is gonna be. Uh, 
very uh, with a very uh, smooth skin. I think I'm good for the the body right now. The rest is gonna be latex. It's more or less the proportions I want for the kid. I mean the the legs are a bit too thick, but it's all right. It's pretty good. Because the design actually changed. The first design I show you, yeah, it's more or less the good proportions. But then in the latest drawings, because this is pretty close, you know, it's pretty damn close. Uh, but in the last drawings I did, the characters were actually a lot more slender. But you know, it's no big deal. In most of the drawings I did, he was. Uh, see, I wanted to put some latex because I wanted him to be able to sometimes be uh, like barefoot or uh, with, uh, you know, topless. But I'm not sure it's going to be uh, really uh, important. If I really need it, I'll, I'll do another one. Uh, just specific, another one specific. Uh, yeah, it's going to be really easy. Also, as, you, as I said, you know, I've got some, some spare parts that I cut. So I'm going to be able to use all of this. Should be fine. And I'm pretty eager actually to sculpt this one because it's been drying for weeks because I did many other stuff instead. And I think I'm going to sculpt it uh, tonight. Uh, I'm taking my time, you know, to get something uh, nice. I've got a Dremel, so I'm probably going to Dremel the eyes also. Uh, and uh, for the eyes, I'm going to, wait, I'm, I'm going to glue this and then I'm going to show you what I'm going to use for the eyes. First, I'm going to glue this. Looks pretty good. There's going to be latex on top. And I'm going to do the volumes and the... He's going to have some small, but he's going to have some muscles. And I'm going to do them with latex afterwards. I guess. Oh, doesn't work very well, but it's gonna stick all right. There you go. There you go. Um, what I'm gonna use for the the eyes is, um, you know, by doing crafting. I don't know if you uh, do um, Fox Sword. You're actually a subscriber from the the channel uh, the channel uh, of of crafting. You do uh, RPG, right? Uh, I don't know if you do, but uh, if you're one of my subscribers, uh, you know our us crafters. We keep mostly everything, and my girlfriend just found out this old uh, um, wrist uh, sort of collar. It's I'm sorry, I'm not English, um, and they're blue, so I definitely have to paint them. But they're just the right size for the eyes, and you've got this small um, this small hole that is going to be just perfect. To uh, to set the eye correctly when you know I want to animate, so I'm gonna I think I'm gonna use uh, two of them, just uh, to have the eyes, and uh, and they're the right size, and uh, I'm gonna be setting them you know inside the head, and of course the the face is gonna be changeable, but I, I think I'm gonna use these. They're just uh, perfect. I'll just have to paint them, and they're gonna be very easy to you know, to set. Bracelets. It's actually the same word in French, but I wasn't sure. Uh, there you go. So what I'm gonna do is put some mud podge here, and uh, just to have a stronger bond there, because I had very little glue left, strong glue, and I want a stronger bond here. Uh, same for the other arm. I don't know where it is. There it is. There you go. And then uh, I'm going to sculpt the head a little bit. Oh, shit. Harder than I thought. There you go. And then I'm going to sculpt the head. And by the time the Mod Podge uh, has set, uh, I'll do the, the raw, uh, wrappings around the, around the, the arms. Uh, 
Um, I don't want too much. Uh, if you're talking about the eyes, I don't want too much detail. There's probably I'm gonna leave the, you know the inside black because it's gonna good uh, give a, a good uh, you know black um, rendition of the the inside of the eye. It's gonna be obviously white or you know ivory, uh, and there's probably gonna be a very small outline of uh, of color. Uh, he's gonna have brown eyes, I think, or green eyes. I don't remember what I I chose. M maybe green. But it's going to be very easy. Uh, there's not going to be many, many close-ups. I think uh, on uh, on the, the shorts I'm going to do. But I want to able to be able to do some close-ups. So I'll probably try to do something as detailed as I can, just for the sake of it. But the most important thing is to have something readable from afar. So I'm going to try to to film uh, to take pictures in HD. Uh, but you know, I'm going to do my best. We'll see. So I'm still gonna I'm gonna try to do something pretty fine. the The goal is to if I bought this, this wasn't very expensive, but if I bought this, it's really have something that's gonna be able to last. I want to be able to you know if I want to shoot, I'm gonna try. But if I want to, if it goes well, I want to be able to shoot a, a short film with it if I want. Maybe maybe it'll break. Maybe I'll have to do an, another one. But I'm gonna try to do something pretty. Uh, the face uh, hopefully is gonna be beautiful, and uh, the clothes I'm gonna make sure that uh, that are they they end up pretty cool. So I'm actually gonna try to do something nice. We'll see how it ends up. Uh, making a larger, yeah, it's probably a better idea. But at first I'm gonna start with just a regular character, and we'll see later. See here, I did something that wasn't very smart. This is gonna be. This is jet being jammed into the. Okay, this is better. Okay, this is way better. Okay. I hope it will move uh, good with the latex as well on top. I don't know why it sticks, but I think there's there might be a little bit of glue there. Uh, yeah, as a whole, for I don't have much space, even if I have moved out, so I have a little more space, but shit, shit, I have a little bit uh, more space, but not that much, so I'm probably going to be uh, doing some, uh, uh, some drawings or paintings for the, the back of the, you know, like, um, uh, landscapes, like the, the back on, of the screen when I when I film, uh, and I'm probably gonna do uh, use the technique uh, doing some props that are gonna be really in front, and do some composition work, uh, doing some miniatures, uh, spaces that are actually are gonna be smaller and then you know enlarged uh, on screen. Uh, since I I know how to do miniature stuff, so I guess it could look uh, good because I I can't really afford I don't have the space. To uh to do a uh, large uh, sets. Uh, I'm gonna put the mud budge. But um, the glue didn't stick pretty well there, and that kind of bumps me out. But I'm gonna put the mud budge. I'm gonna put the mud podge. So for the mud podge, I think I'm gonna use this mud podge. It's the hardest one there is. Um. But yeah, for close up, you're right. I really should. Uh, I'll probably end up uh, doing some. A bigger head. I think it's a uh, it's a good alternative, and I think most of the time it's what they do. Yeah, backdrop landscapes. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna do something that's really, you know, in in style with the uh, the comics I wanted to do. You know, 
there's gonna be texture. I mean, there's gonna be more of a realistic look, of course, because I'm gonna use some, you know, natural stuff. Like the the clothes are actually gonna be fabric and. But uh, but I'm sure I can blend this with some art uh, that isn't gonna be a hundred percent realistic. I'll see, you know. But I'm pretty confident with uh, the backdrops. I'm sure I can come up with something interesting. Oh, I think someone's getting home. Ça va et toi euh, Ta maman a appelé euh, Juste euh, pense à la rappeler parce qu'elle se demandait où t'étais. Je voulais te dire un truc euh, à propos de Pokémon, je sais pas trop quoi. Oui, je sais, mais c'est pour ça qu'elle était étonnée que tu sois pas à la maison parce qu'elle t'a déposé juste en bas de la maison. T'es allé faire des courses So I'm putting a healthy coat of mud podge just to make a stronger bond there. Of course, it's gonna contract. No, no, je parlais. Euh, je fais un live. Je vais bientôt le finir, je pense. But there you go. Because I wanted the um, the front of the arm, the uh, the forearm, to be uh, to be thinner than it was. This is going to be way better. There you go. And there you go. Um, uh, first shots might be from 10 meters away of whole figure. This will frame. Uh, first shots might be ten meters away from the whole figure. I don't get what you meant. First shots might be from ten meters away of whole figure. Um, this will frame what details to pick out. Ten meters, like um, according to the scale of the the character, you mean? Not actually uh, ten meters, right? Because I'll never have uh, enough uh, space. Well, actually, I could because. The flat isn't very small, but I'm mostly going to shoot in small uh, spaces. Uh, unless the character is really going to be seen from afar. But I guess I'm, I'm going to be able to cheat also, you know, and sometimes film him and, you know, under, uh, in front of a green sc uh, screen and then add him on another, uh, you know, I'll, I'll use the technology I can use too. Uh, I got hang up on making things too detailed to start with. I had drawing style and we enjoy seeing the models look similar. Yeah, I'll try. I'll try. Uh, and I also can definitely get ahead of myself doing wanting to do too detailed things. I mean, the, the style is pretty easy. He's not going to have very complex embroidered stuff, you know, if that's the question. Uh, it's going to have some detail. You know, he's obviously going to have the small beads and, the you know, the small bones he had. And he's going to have this hopefully beautiful um, uh, scabbard for his um, his little knife. But he's not going to be too overly detailed. Uh, I'll see. I'll see. I, I, I'll try to do something in the middle, you know. It's going to be detailed, but not too much. Something nice, but not too catch uh, too much the, uh, the attention. So that should strengthen up a little bit the, um, the, uh, the forearm. So I'm going to leave this to dry. And hopefully this puppets will be more resistant than the first one I, I built. We'll see. We'll see about that later. Well, the clothes aren't going to be made by me, so it won't be on my time, you know. Uh, I'm basically going to focus on the character, the heads, uh, which will already take some time. 
and uh, the small props i think like the maybe the belts uh the blades uh uh but uh, most of the rest of the um, the character is just fabric you know clothes and i'm not the best to do this so i'm gonna rely on my girlfriend to do that She'll, you know, she'll take more pleasure by doing it, and she'll do way more of a good job than me. So, she already said she'd do it. So, I'm gonna rely on on her expertise. So, I'm gonna leave this to dry somewhere else. Tu va bien? I think she's breaking the whole apartment down. Um, so, I'm gonna leave this to dry right there. There you go. Mobile drones are going to be able to last longer than... Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> That's the plan. Otherwise, I don't exactly know why I'm using it. Uh, but I, uh, I think it'll last longer, obviously. And that's that was my main concern. Because uh, when I saw the, the arm breaking, I was like... There was no use in, in, in carrying, you know. Because the legs are, aren't broken, but they're going to break. All right? They're going to break at one stage. And you know, the arms just broke while I was doing the the character, so wasn't gonna be very interesting to film. But you know, experimenting. You always fail before you succeed, you know. So the character is gonna be um Yeah, you've seen the face, very round face, uh, a bit cartoon. And uh with the nose that is gonna be a lot smaller though. I think I'm gonna use this since the blade is already pretty blunt. So he's gonna have kind of a round nose, but not that big. I'm gonna sculpt it, you know, take my time. Actually, with FIMO, I really enjoy uh, sculpting it uh, by removing matter when it's dry, because you, you get way more precise. And this is gonna be my prototype, so I can take time. Scouting it. Um, everything's made out of a pretty hard plastic. So um, if I go too far, I'm sure it'll pop out. But I'm pretty confident when everything is glued in with uh, the latex that I'm going to be able to pop it back in if you know shit happens. Then again, I'll see. Everything's made out of this pretty hard plastic, so it's hard, but it's pretty flexible though. So it seems very good for uh, armature. It's resistant, it holds, but it's also uh, flexible enough to be able to put it back in without breaking the pieces too much. So I'm pretty confident. We'll see uh, during the use. I mean, if it breaks, it breaks. I'll use something else. I'll probably end up buying those one or two armatures that are more expensive, but I'm not sure about that because they can come pretty expensive. Even if they're great, you know, I'm not willing to pay 150 bucks for a, a wire armature, even if it's the best thing. It's a lot of money, though. But if this works, it's going to be great. FIMO, another vinyl base polymer clay. It's great for substrate sculpting. Looks like nylon or vinyl. Tough materials. Yeah, I don't know exactly which one it is or if it's exactly that because I really don't know much about uh, different kind of, um, of vinyls or of plastic. But it looks pretty hard, but also flexible, so it should be great. I'll see and use. So I did two versions of the head. There's another one somewhere. I think I'm gonna should find. It. Oh yeah, it's there. I did a bigger one with more. Uh... So it's obviously way more deformed. Maybe I'll use it for another character, but I don't think so because most of the other characters uh, are gonna be uh, with a uh, movable jaws. I found many tutorials online, and the kids are basically going to be the only characters that are going to have faces that are going to, are going to be able to pop on, because they need to have very smooth faces being kids. But most of the other characters are just going to be, you know, trolls or 
pretty uh, tough bearded uh, man, uh, you know, Vikings. So for the others, I'm going to actually use some mechanical jaws and um, and it's going to be way easier to make them. They're going to have uh, much less of a range of expression than them. I mean, fine expressions, but, uh, but it'll be easier to make the other ones. So I did this one and there's actually some epoxy in it to harden uh, the center. But I, I'm think I'm I think I'm gonna use this one. It's way more close to the uh, the other shape of the head, so I have to remove less uh, less matter, less um, less less of the, the matter. I'm gonna leave a little more um, FIMO. I'm not gonna do a math. I'm actually gonna leave leave a space there because when I cast it, I wanna leave enough space uh, to put each time some FIMO and then sculpt uh, the head. So this is more gonna be a generic head. You gotta have, you're gonna have the the shape, the good proportions, but it's gonna be uh, like a head that is gonna be. I'm gonna do a mold that will enable me to do mostly every expression so it's gonna be not gonna be very precise it's really a template this head is gonna be a template I don't know what my girlfriend talking about probably work but she looks super pissed <laughs> sorry about the noise she tends to speak super uh, Super loud. Hope it doesn't uh, bother too much. Yeah, she's talking about work. Yeah, that's what you said just before, right? In any case, this is going to take some time and I'm going to take some time, so I don't know what you're doing right now. What are you doing? Are you crafting? Or are you... Because you know it's a pleasure having you there, but it's probably not going to be the most fascinating uh, stream ever. So it's cool having you here and talking, but if you want to do some, if you have something else to do, just, you know, go about do your stuff, right? No, it's all right. <laughs> I think she's all right. She's just talking to uh, to her mother on the phone. So. Tu vas bien, Charlotte? Yeah, she's fine. I'm not especially uh, skilled in matter of uh, sculpting, but I've done some sculpting uh, before. I'm just not that experienced. I can show you something I did before uh, in sculpting FIMO if you want. I'll show you. So there you go. This is mostly made out of FIMO. It's a gift I made for her uh, one or two years ago, I guess. She's, uh, unlike me, a big uh, Miyazaki fan. So 
I made this with a sort of translucent uh, base that is plastic. And uh, a version of herself uh, just um, in the place of uh, Shiro, of Sam. And there you go. So this is made out of Femu, the character here. So, pretty fun. Oh putain, c'est trop tard pour les formations maintenant. Ah, 28. Oh, bah ça va. Ça devrait faire quand même maintenant. Ouais, 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 je sais bien. Je vais faire ça tout à l'heure. J'ai eu peur que c'était jusqu'à vendredi en fait. Bah c'est le 28 c'est ça Bah c'est le suivant. Bah c'est si le 28 c'est le suivant. Et il me semblait que j'avais peur que c'était jusqu'à ce vendredi ici. Mais là ce vendredi ici c'était le 21 donc... Euh... I got a few places in my sketches. Uh, cool. What what type of terrain did you do for the thirty two millimeter? Are you specialized in one type of uh, like game um, world, or is it historical? Is it like fantasy, uh, science fiction? What what type of uh, terrain is that one? Oh, I'm I'm not gonna use the components of the other. The other is really meant to be a sculpture, so um, it's painted on it. I don't think I'm gonna use it. It was a gift for her, so I'm I'm not sure I'm gonna use it to cast. It's all right. I have time. I'll do other ones, like this one. Good thing with with fine paste is at the end you can use some cloth and get it extra smooth. And I'm gonna use the airbrush. I didn't have the airbrush back then when I did the, the other sculpture of Shiro, of um, Spirited Away. But now I have an airbrush and I'm definitely gonna use it for the faces. Oh no, I mean, the one I did was pretty go cool, uh, mostly considering I'm not really very experienced, but um, I'm not, I mean, I'm just not, not as experienced uh, in sculpting than in drawing or, or even, you know, doing a terrain for D&D, just, just like you. Okay, it's terrain for D&D, but you're using a larger scale, okay. Okay, okay. Well, then, in that case, yeah. I mean, uh, I'm going to use an even larger scale for uh, for this, but yeah. Anyway, most of the techniques we use, you know, shown by YouTubers, uh, you know, uh, crafters uh, on YouTube, are definitely applicable for higher scales. I'm going to use everything I've learned uh, the past years for, uh, you know, for doing uh, the environments uh, for the stop motion. But yeah, most of the things I craft is for uh, for props for D and D for uh, for RPG. I shouldn't say D and D because I'm using many mechanics from D and D, and most of the the mechanics are from D and D. But my game really <laughs> isn't uh, set in the world of Dungeons and Dragons, so I'm I'm saying D and D because I use the mechanics, but.
I don't use uh, the spells. I I use spells, but not this kind of spell. For example, and the car the the creatures aren't the same too. Theater of the mind is too limited for explaining my work. World and creatures. I've recently started D and D during building. I've seen environment. Look, look, uh, from what I've seen, have the environment look locked down. High fantasy D and D. Yeah. I used. Uh, um, you probably know it if you're a subscriber and you've seen my my other vids, but. I'm uh, playing low fantasy. So there's basically some magic, but it's not like there there's going to be uh like flames uh uh flame balls or things like that that are going to be shooting at uh characters by wizards or stuff like that. But yeah, but I enjoy um, high fantasy very much too. In fact, I would like to to be able to play in a as a player in another group uh, with a, a DM, and uh, I would like to to do it with a, with actual D and D. You know, in the same uh, universe. Um, about what you said about the theater of the mind, uh, that it's too limited for explaining your world and creatures. Uh, it's a great idea to do some terrain building uh, around this uh, incredible new uh, environment you're building, basically, uh, or creatures, you know. But bear in mind that you'll never be able to craft, uh, like, I don't know. I, I guess it really depends what you want to do uh, with your group. But I mean, uh, I'm having an issue uh, just figuring out uh, what are the limitations of theater of the mind. Because uh, once you use, um, you know, once you describe the, the senses, what the characters uh, see uh, with, you know, suitable words and uh, you know to explain them the sense they have the hearing they have and everything uh, I mean I've never been really at a short for words describing something even if it's something like an aberration something super weird theater is the mind is for me at least pretty much the the best thing if you want to describe something very peculiar because you can appeal to emotions and you know sense and something you can never uh, show uh, on the tabletop even with a great miniature you know I mean you can do the best miniature you want or buy the the greatest miniature you want it's still not going to move it's not going not going to sound anything create any sound it's not, still not going to um, smell like anything when you're using theater of the mind you can describe and hopefully the characters can get a more you know actual depiction uh the limitations for me of the theater of the mind is really the space because you you know you can um, describe them in detail uh something that's in front of them and that's great to give the impression i know it, you know you can describe tulu way better you know the horror of tulu way better by describing it even if it's supposed to be undescribable uh, than by showing you know a big miniature actually I mean, it's going to look awesome on the tabletop, but it's not going to give the, the same impression and the, the characters, the I mean, the players won't have the, the chills, you know, on their forearm. If they just see the miniature, they're going to be like, oh, it's so awesome, it's cool. But if you describe it, uh, they're gonna, definitely going to have the chills. But then again, if you got an army of enemies, uh, just describing isn't going to help during combat. So that's really where I find... Uh, the props uh, to be uh, very important just to, you know to figure out and to know where everything is aside from that uh, I tend to go really with theater of the mind
but I don't know what's your uh, really your uh, uh, your take on this. Oh, I guess. Well, you get that with reading. I mean, uh, hopefully, uh, of course, I don't do, uh, you know, um, how you say, uh, I don't do uh, game master, uh, I don't master the games in English. I do it in French, and I'm more, uh, I have more ease uh, finding my words. But I guess you get used by the time. In any case, there is no right way to do it or wrong way. I guess there are only, you know, know the expression, uh, whatever floats your boat, right? At first, I tried to use uh, terrain every time. and But actually, setting up things usually takes too much time. So I just use it when I really need it. And they need a uh, visual aid to know where everything is and what's the distance between uh, their character and uh, the building or whatever, or the enemies. Mostly if they're numerous. I mean, if there's only one enemy in front, you don't even need a miniature. You can describe it and make rolls. Unless there is an, uh, an enclosed space with a... Uh, you know, props or, you know, if you can use the the, um, the environment to your advantage. I want to create board game type of our own visual clues and tactical use of terrain. That's cool, man. I don't know if you, you probably follow uh, Hankerin. Uh, Hankerin Fernay from uh, former Drunkens and Dragons from uh, Runehammer. He's in many great videos about this. I think you, you probably already saw uh, his uh, his channel, but if just in case if you didn't, uh, go check it out. You'll love it. Most of my plays come from more gaming backgrounds. Yeah, well, then in that case, it's totally uh, yeah, it's totally legit. They are used to to visual aid each time. In any case, you know. Everyone's got his way of working. There's no bad way. Yeah. He's great. Gave me many ideas. Mainly for story. Because I watched, he made a few tutorials, but he's not the... <laughs> The, um, he wasn't my favorite uh, YouTuber for tutorials, but he definitely, probably at one stage, I think he was my favorite YouTuber for a long time. Mainly for the methodology uh, he gave, uh, how to, to create, uh, you know, simple rooms with, you know, very elegant design or, you know, encounters and stuff like that. He's got a very good method, um, how do you call that, uh, methodology approach to... Uh, to game mastering and it was really interesting to learn things from him. So at one stage I'm gonna be, I have to do the ears. He's supposed to have some big ears. Tu sais, Charlotte, mm -hmm. t'aurais pas envie de te faire une projection ce soir. En fait, euh, c'était une affirmation qui s'est transformée en question. Non, mais c'est justement pour savoir, parce que comme ça on pourrait télécharger un truc, mais euh, je sais pas ce dont t'aurais envie, quoi. Sinon, on peut... Bah, sinon on regarde sur le site ce qu'il y a en ce moment. Oui, mais j'ai pas vu grand chose. Ah. Je vois. Tu veux voir des poules d'eux Ouf. Ouais, toi ça te fait envie peut-être Je sais pas, parce que c'est la suite. Oh, 
franchement. Deadpool, j'aime pas trop. Ouais, Death Wish, solo, j'avais bien aimé moi. Death Wish, euh, c'est quoi déjà le synopsis ouais, C'était un film avec Bruce Willis, c'était ça le synopsis. Tu sais, il y avait écrit affiche euh, le meilleur de Bruce Willis. Ouais. Ça, 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 je sais pas. Si, c'est vrai. Ouais, je sais pas plus. Ouais. Mais je me serais bien fait une projection. Sinon, on prend un film qu'on a aussi, mais est-ce qu'il y a un vieux film que tu aurais envie de revoir Uh, do you keep the characters visual in your head or do you have the join nearby for reference? Do you keep image handy for quick glances? Uh, for what I'm doing, no. Because I drew that character so much. I basically know him by heart. So I don't really need uh, the reference. I mean, it's more or less uh, the right uh, proportions. His, his nose is probably going to get a little smaller. His Uh, cheeks a little uh, more recessed, so I'm probably gonna dig still inside, but I'm gonna do it very slowly, you know, to get to the right, uh, right just the right size. Um, this ear is about to be the same size, so I'm gonna sculpt it inside and at the back to have something more realistic for the the ear at the back. Uh, this one's gonna get a little smaller because it's too big. But yeah, mostly I've got the. I don't have the reference. It's I mean it's back there, but it's clo It's closed. But you know, I I, I drew them very, uh, yeah, very. Uh, uh, let's see. Wait, I'm gonna find it. Like from the side, I've I've drew them a lot, you know. So I know them. I've got a drawing from the side somewhere, I guess. Ah, crystal, on peut regarder dark crystal. C'est vraiment chouette. Tu l'as jamais vu, toi Bon, on pourrait télécharger ça. C'est vraiment chouette. So, there you have it. From the side. So, imagine with the, um, the hairs. It's pretty, pretty close, you know. Of course, there's probably gonna, there, there are other drawings where I have him, uh, him represent from the side. The big one I showed you before. I don't know where it is. Where is it Uh, shite. I'm gonna find it. Ah! Has disappeared. So, yeah, I'm pretty... I don't really need the reference. I know how he looks. I know even if he's not exactly like that. Uh, I can change him if I want. I want him, um, I, I really like this head, I want something a little, I want him to have a look of uh, Sam, you know, Sammy, uh, from the Norwegian uh, ethne, so he's gonna have bright eyes, but I want him to have like slightly uh, um, thinner um, eyes, and I wanted a, a flat nose. So maybe the just you know the cheeks are gonna be a bit more recessed and uh, uh, how do you call that? What's called the menton in English? Well, this part is gonna be a bit thinner, but yeah, more or less, I have the right uh, the right proportions. I just the chin, okay, uh, but mainly. Um, I have the character in my head, and uh, by sculpting, and I can also, you know, experiment when I'll be creating new characters, even if it's based on another growing. I'm really used to, draw, so I can actually transpose this uh, in three D without caring too much uh, about the reference. But it, you know, there's no rule. It depends of the the person. I just don't feel the need for it. Besides, it's such a slow. Uh, a process that I can't really do a mistake. I mean, if I do a mistake, I'm just gonna, you know, take uh, take away more uh, matter somewhere, and I'm gonna correct it. For now, it's good. Yeah, Norse, uh, Norse, Norse, Norse. Yeah, I guess. Then again, Vikings were Norse. Uh, 
but they weren't uh, Sami. Uh, the Sami, I don't know if you've heard about them, they still exist. It's actually the oldest tribe living in Europe. They are uh, living in Norway, you know. These are the tribes that are, um, uh, that are uh, you know, living on uh, reindeers or things like that. And they live in tribes and they existed during the, the Viking Age. But they weren't, uh, they had some interactions with Vikings, but they aren't from the same ethnic. It's not, the, they haven't the same uh, ethnic uh, than Vikings and Danes and Nor Southern Nor Norwegian. These tribes were from a different stock. And still are. Yeah, Sami. And they have uh, the face uh, that is really typed, uh, that looks a little bit like Native uh, Americans or, um, or you know, uh, or uh, uh, Inuits, uh, but with uh, very blue eyes. Yeah, lap. So that's what I was going for for him. Maybe not completely. Maybe he's like you know half, uh, half Sami. But um, but I want, I wanted that in his face. You you saw kind of his origin. The other character is gonna have more of a long elongated face with a very small nose, very blue eyes and very long, uh, blonde hair. He's gonna be the other one's gonna be the more traditional uh, Viking uh, kid. And the other one's gonna have a very bad uh, temper. Um, well, very bad temper. He's gonna be a, a character that's that comes from a rich uh, family of uh, Vikings. So obviously he's kind of a dick. And this one is more or less a hunter, so he's pretty much rough around the hedges and a bit more, um, a bit less, uh, how do you call that, sophisticated. Likes to fight too. So these are supposed to be you know, characters that are really different and that most of the time uh, fight each other and you know like uh, like friends or uh, or brothers of, that are very different creating uh, hopefully funny uh, moments but you know they're supposed to be complement um, complementing them the, the other one since they don't have the same weaknesses or the same issues Yeah, spoiled child uh, teamed up with a rustic. That's more or less the the idea. And the spoiled child is, you know, convinced he's gonna be a super hard. Uh, he's convinced everything is owned to him. Yeah, he's spoiled all right, and also he wants to be a, a warrior. This one doesn't really want to be a warrior, but he wants. Uh, Well, he's mostly the good guy. This one is mostly the. You know, he he enjoys uh, traveling. He enjoys uh, hunting, eating, uh, spending quality time with new people. But he's gonna have um, also um, some uh, pretty bad um, sides. I mean, he's gonna be very naive, very. Um, uh, you know, he's like uh, Son Goku, you know, uh, Dragon Ball uh, Z. He's going to be like Goku. So very, well, not as strong as Goku, but he's going to be very naive, uh, very easy to uh, to trick. Uh, 
because he's mostly gonna believe that everyone he meets is either you know if it's human or pretending to be French uh, friendly he's gonna believe it's friendly the other one's gonna be a uh, way more um, uh, this one is a lot uh, very trustworthy uh, shit I'm sorry I can't find my words well the other one is not gonna be uh, as naive as this one because the other one is coming from uh, a family of you know rich aristocrats so he knows what humans are about this one mostly uh, hang out with actually nice people so Exactly. He loves to eat and, you know, drink and have fun. And he's going to turn out to be a shaman. The other one will turn out to be a warrior. Obviously. But this one will turn out to be a magician. Because he's going to be in contact with uh, spirits from the earth, uh, from the land, you know, Lonvetia, the name I have, actually coming from Norse mythology. It means um, uh, spirit protecting, uh, protector of the land. He's going to meet Lonvetors, he's going to meet some trolls. That in Norse mythology, trolls are actually very intelligent creatures. They aren't the stupid creatures that dwell under bridges. In mythology, trolls are probably one of the most powerful uh, magicians that exist. Uh, they are very uh, versed in the, the art of magic in mythology. So he's going to learn many things from humans, but also from trolls and supernatural beings and probably gonna become a defender of the the earth in a sense but I'm not gonna tell too much because maybe uh, it's gonna be a spoiler so yeah don't worry I mean I'm just experimenting with uh, With animation, uh, the story is super long, so I'm not spoiling much. Besides, it's not completely decided yet. Their future isn't engraved in stone. Yes, trolls are magic by nature, indeed. But in folklore, they are now considered as uh, evil and stupid beings they weren't really uh, stupid in or they weren't perceived as stupid in early uh, Viking times I mean there were some stupid giants the Thurs for example there are many names for giants uh, different types of giants in mythology in Norse mythology you've got the Jotuns that are the most common uh, that are super big and strong but you've got the Thursar that are supposed to be very stupid because Thurs um, etymolo etym oh shit etym uh, okay the etymology of this word is um, is like some something being stupid so some giants were stupid some creatures were stupid but definitely not trolls I don't exactly remember what's, uh, what's the origin of troll, but I think it has to do with uh, magic user or something like that. And there are many uh, magic uh, spells that are described in the, the Eddas, um, the Eddas or the Sagas, that are akin to elf, either elf or troll creatures. So... They're supposed to be very good magic users.
Yeah, I think. I mean, you don't need much uh, media change. I mean, yeah, folklore. I think Christianity also probably attacked uh, the trolls because it was, you know, every sign of um, pagan power was uh, either diminished, uh, either uh, turned evil for a better uh, conversion to Christianity. So maybe also this way, the you know, the elves or... The elves didn't really become negative in the legends, but the trolls did. Not exactly sure why. Then again, the elves were supposed to be... They weren't really supposed to be beneficial, actually, to humans. They never really were in the old uh, folklore. They were tricksters and powerful beings, but neither positive or really negative. The trolls, however, for humans were perceived more negative, though. Because most uh, many uh, evil spells came from troll or have troll uh, in their name. Microsoft. <laughs> Un malware de flamme critique. Ah, le robot là. <laughs> are you talking about uh, Bloxword? Are you talking about elves in D and D or in uh, Norse mythology? Because it's really not the same thing. So I'm just asking. Um, well, most of the time, yeah, in mythology, they don't much, really much care for humans. However, um, they sometimes tend to uh, interfere. Because uh, I know that uh, several uh, sicknesses in, the, in Old Norse, are literally transcripted as uh, the disease of the the elves. Uh, I don't know what it is exactly, but there's one in particular. It's like madness, a sort of madness that can get to you, and it's actually considered uh, to be a an elf uh, malediction, an elf like shooting at you, invisible shot, of course. But yeah, they're definitely on another plan of existence. In any case, uh, Vikings, uh, Scandinavians really believed in another world that was uh, literally existing on top of our world, a world of spirit and magic that some of us were able to see, but was definitely here, not on a pl real plane, but actually, you know, superposed to our world. So the elves were roaming about them for, for them. They, they believed the elves were all around. Just, they couldn't really interfere, but if they got sick, sometimes it was the elves. They weren't living in some far-off land or anything like that for the Vikings. It's just like the dwarves. That may interest you. I don't know uh, at how much points you're, uh, you're, uh, you're interested in, uh, in elves and, and Nordic mythology. You seem to, to, have, uh, to have studied or read some of it. Because I myself have been very interested in 
Viking uh, Norse mythology. <laughs> but you may be interested in um, in some uh, some interesting uh, theories about dwarves. I mean, in um, you've got the appearance of dwarves related in the mythology. So you've got the the. Um, the stories that tell that they came from the body of, uh, was it Ymir? I think it was Ymir, the first giant god that was killed by Odin and his brothers. When the body rotted, like the bones were foreign mountains in the world, and that, um, how do you call it? worms, yeah, worms, maggots, that lived inside his body uh, became the dwarves. But what is also very, um, very interesting is maybe how it appeared, how dwarves uh, appeared, and uh, the appearance they have, uh, the, the scale that changes, the fact that they are described as uh, amazing uh, smiths living uh, underneath the earth. They are often described by having either very pale skin or very dark skin, uh, as if it was burned by frost. Uh, they are described um, as... Uh, they aren't described like this, but the, the, the name uh, Dvargar, uh, the, the origin, uh, one of the meanings, is uh, deformed, not deformed, but um, more like crawled... Uh, uh, it's not the exact term, but something that is, you know, bent down and crawled as if it was, uh, you know, all old and decrepit. And uh, I read several books about mythology and, you know, historians that analyzed the, the mythology. And I found one, uh, one of the theories uh, that was very interesting about the, uh, the dwarves uh, saying that, um, well, dwarves are very old, you know, in, in folklore or mythology. They're probably, probably it existed on some form, maybe they weren't called dwarves, but they exist for a very long time, maybe even before Odin or Thor. And um, the fact that the word Varga means deformed, uh, that they are living under the ground, that they are living in the dark, that they, they can't come out, the actual, because uh, normally the, 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 uh, the dwarves weren't able to come out uh, on the sunlight, they would turn to stone. It wasn't the trolls, that would it was it was the the it was the um, the dwarves originally that couldn't come out, and the fact that they lived underground, that they were amazing smith, uh, that they were curled uh, with a blackened skin or very white skin, and that they couldn't get out in the world of the livings. One of the theories is that probably the dwarves were uh, uh, considered as uh, Dverga, as, um, as, uh, as dead people, dead smiths that were laid into the ground. And uh, you know that uh, in the early Viking age, uh, they didn't really burn the bodies. They actually buried the bodies, and they buried the bodies being curled themselves, you know, in a fetal uh, position. And the bodies also tended to... To, to either uh, either rot uh, inside the grave or become black because of the um, because of the ground uh, getting uh, you know very uh, cold freezing ground while the body tends to uh, to get uh, black uh, almost mummified and I found this pretty interesting that's one of the theories for the the appearance of the the dwarfs and the, the conception of these people living under hills uh, unable to come out and share the world of the living uh, that would turn to stone if they tried is because they actually uh, uh, lived in the other underworld they lived in the world of death but they were amazing smiths because they just had eternity to 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 perfection their skills and were able to make uh, incredible, uh, incredible uh, works of art for the gods uh, or the men. And this was kind of funny. Uh, I really like this this idea that dwarves are actually just dead people that stayed underground so long. You know, dead uh, 
Smith that stayed so long that they became uh, even more magic, but that they their curled look was due to the fact that they were actually bodies, you know, buried under the ground. Yeah, it depends upon culture and traditions, of course. I'm just talking about what I know, because uh, of course you've got also the Darwin seeds, uh, the the Celtic version of the the little, you know the little people living under hill. They are pretty much dwarves, <laughs> also, you know. I'm just talking about Norse mythology because it's uh, the subject I know the most. But um, I found this pretty interesting. Because it's not a perception you have when you know when you you're interested in D and D or you know Tolkien and the Law of the Rings things like that. These uh, these works these these amazing stories have chosen one interpretation, but there can be many interpretations and historians of you know the the way these creatures were perceived at this time. Uh, back then could have been very very different than the ones we have it's probably actually very different than the ones we're, we're perceiving in right now I think I'm taking away too much final paste but I can still add some on top that's good coming out pretty well but I'm probably gonna be ending the stream um, in a short notice because I want to get something to grab something to eat even if it's not that late here but it was nice talking to you I'm probably gonna finish this uh, later on grab something to eat. I'm gonna try to do this ear and then we'll be done for tonight. Yes, it will. Well, what were you doing on your uh, on your side? Are you crafting? Are you working? Are you just following what I'm doing? Hey, Legacy of Mage. Well, the stop motion puppet is uh, made for making stop motion, <laughs> obviously. So, for the moment, I'm just, you know, I'm letting it dry because I put some mud pudge uh, here. So, I'm letting it dry. And I've done this. And I'm sculpting the prototype of the head that has to be a lot smaller, actually. It's way too big. But it's not that big. Should be a little smaller though. It's a bit too deformed. So um, it's a bit too big. That's kind of a bummer. The original one was supposed to be bigger. Not that bigger, but a little bigger. So uh, should get the head to be smaller, I guess. Yeah, the word uh, work you do in your video. Oh, thanks. 
Well, you're the one doing the stop motion uh, videos on your channel too. I've watched the two of them. They're super fun. Right? I'm not mistaking, right? It's you, Legacy of Mage. Oh, no, it's not for commission. It's just for me. I like stop motion, so I want to try it. Oh, I've tried it before, but I really want to do it with a puppet. I'm trying to do the next stuff, you know, the next level stuff. So I'm experimenting, and as I told uh, Plug Sword before, I've done s several uh, uh, versions that didn't turn out great because of breakage, because the materials I used weren't great. So there was this version, this one that was better with another type of uh, uh, wire, but still it broke. The, the arms broke when I was about to finish the wrapping. So this was kind of a bummer. And then I've decided to uh, buy uh sort of a cheap uh, structure uh with actual joints that would hold up a lot better so i've added some some foam there to enlarge some parts because the the joints were a lot uh, thicker and then just today yeah here on stream i've put some wrapping all around and uh yeah i was waiting for the arms to to set and shit that doesn't work at all. I'll have to find another way because uh, apparently the the mud budge doesn't work. Shh. I have to find something else. It just broke there. It's all right. I'll find something else. Some actual glue. I should start with a smaller head, I guess. Because the the other character was uh, the character was supposed to be bigger, than this one. Then again, I'm wondering because I could just. I mean, the shape is good, so. I could just you know. Remove more uh, matter. Could work. I mean, I don't need to remove too much of it. I'll see. In any case, guys. I think I'm gonna end the stream. Because I'm going to get something to eat. Um, I'll see you later for another episode. Maybe a live. Maybe another episode. I, I know I want to do an episode. I'll do an episode about the, um, uh, the stop motion. But probably weeks when this uh, character is completely finished. I want to do a, maybe an episode of half an hour. But with all the stages i done. Uh, or maybe several episodes. But that won't be uh, just for now. But I'll probably do this this week. Uh, I'll probably do a very small tutorial on something easy to craft, something very quick, like, um, I'll see, I have some a few ideas. Uh, then I'll see you later for either uh, another live stream or, uh, or an episode. So you guys take care. Uh, thanks for dropping by Legacy of Majors. Thanks, uh, Pog Sword. It was really interesting uh, talking to you. I uh, hope it was interesting to you too. And uh, I'll see you guys another time. Take care. There you go.